Today we will be working on how to size conductors for both continuous and non-continuous loads. First, let's look at the code rules that help us to decide if a load is continuous or non-continuous. Rule 8104 is the first place we need to look. Subrule 3 tells us that a load shall be considered continuous unless it can be shown. And we have two subrules here. So unless it can be shown that under normal operation it will not persist for more than one hour in a two hour period. So what that tells us is that every load is a continuous load unless we can prove that it will only operate for a specific amount of time. Why is it important to correctly size your wire and circuit breaker for a specific load? Well, as we know, every load causes a value of current to flow in, a, in the circuit conductors. As the electrons travel, heat is created due to the resistance in the conductors. If the conductor is incorrectly sized, the heat buildup due to this current flow will cause the insulation around the conductors to melt and break down. This can quickly lead to a fire within the walls of the building. So here we see an example of a conductor that's been exposed to too much current. We can see how the insulation is broken down around the conductors due to the excessive heat. If we have two loads, one continuous and one non-continuous load, but they operate at the same value of current, the wire sizes will be different for the two loads. Here we can see a non-continuous load operating at 13 amps only requires a wire size of 14. But then we see a continuous load of 13 amps requires a 12 gauge wire. Examples of non-continuous loads. Non-continuous loads would include your household dryer and your stove. Both operate with a timer and a thermostat that do not allow the equipment to constantly be heating the required area. So will a stove be operating for more than one hour in a two hour period? No, it will not. Okay, so because we can prove that a stove meets the requirements of subrule three, it will not operate for more than an hour in a two hour period. It is considered to be a non-continuous load. Now let's look at some examples of continuous loads. Okay, an electric hot water tank. An electric hot water tank can easily operate for more than one hour in a two hour period. If there's a constant demand for hot water within a building, the electric hot water tank will continually be heating the water. Lighting loads within a house. We've all left the lights on for more than an hour, I'm sure, so that qualifies them as a continuous load. Our electric, charging ve our electric vehicles and the charging receptacles used to charge them up are also considered to be continuous loads. Once again, because the batteries in the car may take far longer than an hour to charge, that receptacle will be under full load for more than an hour. Now let's look at some of the rules that outline continuous loads. Rule 86302 explains that the branch circuit supplying an electric vehicle, charging equipment, and the ventilation equipment shall be considered a continuous load. 8-302 explains that branch circuit supplying data processing equipment shall also be a continuous load. But now I want you to look at rule 8-304. 8-304 Subrule 1 tells me that there shall not be more than 12 outlets on any two-wire branch circuit, except as permitted by other rules in this code. Subrule 2 tells me such outlets shall be considered to be rated at not less than 1 amp per outlet. So there you go. Our two-wire circuits are most commonly found in a house. 
So if I put 12 outlets on a 15 amp circuit and each outlet was rated at one amps, I would have 12 amps of load connected to a 15 amp breaker. Here, let me put that in a little darker color here. I'm going to have 12 outlets at one amp each that give me a total of 12 amps. I can take that 12 amps and I can divide it by 15 amps, which would be my overcurrent device on a standard two wire circuit within a house. And what does that give me? That gives me 0 0.8 or 80%. Our 15 amp branch circuits inside of a house are considered to be continuous loads. Now that we understand how to determine continuous and non-continuous loads and the effects of improper sized conductors, let's solve a couple equations. So first we need to determine if the load is continuous or non-continuous. So in question number one, I have a 6.5 kilowatt dryer that operates at 240 volts. We need to calculate the required overcurrent device and the wire size for this load. The circuit breaker will have a termination temperature rating of 75 degrees. So is a dryer continuous or non-continuous? That really is the question. So a dryer has a thermostat and a timer, both of which do not allow it to operate for more than a specific time. So I would consider a dryer to be a non-continuous load. If it is a non-continuous load, we can load the circuit breaker to 100% of its rating. So first off, let's determine our load of the circuit. So I have 6,500 watts divided by my voltage of 240 volts would give me a current of 27 amps. So now I can take my 27 amps and I need to select a wire size. So where would I go? Well, I would need to go to table two. So what size wire is good for 27 amps? Well, if I go to the 75 degree column, I see that number 10 is good for 35 amps. So it will more than happily handle the 27 amps of load. Now I need to go to table 13. Table 13 tells me that if I have a conductor that is good for 35 amps, I can put it on a 35 amp breaker. Unfortunately though, if we look at table two, we notice this weird little S shape there. And that weird little S shape takes me to rule 14104. And you also see that noted at the top of table 13. What does 14104 tell me? 14104 tells me that except as, so now we're looking at subrule 2 of 14104, except as provided for by other rules in this code, so rule 1C, so except as provided for by rule 1C, the rating of the overcurrent device protection shall not exceed, we go to subrule 3, shall not exceed 30 amps for number 10. Okay, well that's fine. So we had a 27 amp load. Will a 27 amp load still operate on a 30 amp breaker? Yes, it will. So for this non-continuous dryer, I would require a number 10 conductor, number 10 AWG, and a 30 amp overcurrent device. So for non-continuous loads, all we have to do is find the current demand of the load, and then we can load our circuit breaker to 100% of its rating. Not too bad. Excellent. So now, now that 
continuous loads are so straightforward, let's take a look at a continuous load. First, before we size the conductors and the overcurrent device for a continuous load, there's some rules in 8104 that we need to consider. We need to take a look at subrule 6. Subrule 6 tells me where a fuse or switch or circuit breaker is marked for continuous operation at 80% of the ampere rating of its overcurrent device, the continuous load as determined from the calculated load shall not exceed 80% of the rating of the circuit where the ampacity of the conductors is based on two column 2, 3, or 4 of table 2 or table 4. Okay, so what that's telling me is when I have a continuous load, I have to first determine if my circuit breaker can handle that continuous load at 100% or at 80% of its rating. If a circuit breaker can handle the continuous load at 100% of its rating, then we treat it exactly like a non-continuous load and I can load the circuit breaker up to 100%. But if the circuit breaker is only rated for 80% of its rating at continuous duty, then we need to do a couple different things in our calculation. And we'll take a look at those right now. So now I have an 8.5 kilowatt dryer. That 8.5 kilowatt dryer will operate at 240 volts and it has a temperature termination rating of 75 degrees. The circuit breaker is rated for continuous operation, but it's only rated for continuous operation at 80% of the load. So now we need to size the required wire and overcurrent device for this load. I also want you to note that we're going to use aluminum conductors for this calculation. So first, we need to figure out the load or the current draw of the connected load. So I take my 8,750 watts and I divide it by 240 volts. And that will give me a value of 37 amps. Now if this breaker was rated at 100%, then I could just go to table 4, find my wire, and move along my way. But this breaker isn't rated for 100% of this continuous load. It's only rated for 80%. So what I need to do is I need to increase this value by 20%. So how do I do that? I can go 37 amps divided by, sorry, divided by 0.8. And that's going to give me a value of 46 amps. What we need to see here now is see how we've increased this load by 20%. This buffer or this increase is going to allow my circuit breaker to better dissipate the heat created by this continuous load. All right, so now that we know that our continuous load has a rating of 46 amps, what do we do? Well, we need an aluminum conductor, so we're going to go to table 4. And what is table 4 going to tell me? Table 4 is going to tell me at 75 degrees that I need a number 6 conductor. A number 6 conductor is good for 50 amps. Then I'm going to go to table 13. Table 13 is going to give me, because my conductor is good for 50 amps, then I require a 50 amp overcurrent device. So for that connected load, I require a number 6 wire and a 50 amp 
overcurrent device.